<laughs> Hello, YouTubers. It's Mr. Zero of Mr. Zero's Terror Ride coming at you on the YouTube. I'm Mr. Zero, <laughs> clown, comic, and commentator. Trying to sound like a radio DJ. So, coming at you today. Got something cool to show you. Pick this up if you scan hours over at the Walmart. Boom. I got myself a second Chuckles. A second Chuckles. A second Chuckles. No, it's not my first one. I got another one. Another one. Another Chuckles that I could keep wrapped up because it seems pretty rare because I had a hard time finding both of my Chuckles. Chuckles. My little Chuckles. So now with the use of some blue tack. I can stick them atop my computer, and I can talk to Chuckles instead of looking at myself on the monitor. And I can look at Chuckles and say, I'm not so vain. I don't watch myself in my monitor. I'm not, I'm not so vain, because I don't look in my monitor. And I, I have to say, I'm not so vain that I think that song by Carly Simon is about me. No, I'm not that vain. But I will say this. Short People by Randy Newman. He wrote that about me. Even though he wrote it like it was a hit three years before I was born. It was about me. He knew. He knew what was coming down the line. He knew what to expect. At any rate, my reason for making a video tonight... My topic for the evening is the President of the Americas, or actually the United States of America, um, Prez Barak Hussein Obama, who um, was coming under scrutiny from some former roommates of mine and my wife. She was over having a discussion with them about various things, I'm sure, but she brought up to me how she got in an argument with them about Obama. And my wife wants me to state perfectly clearly that well, she knows that she's an emotional person and usually she argues emotionally. But when she says that she likes Obama, she has specific things that she can point out about him that she likes. Whereas these friends of hers couldn't. They just didn't like him. And she'd sit there, well, why? Well, because he's an a-hole. Why is he an a-hole? Because he's ruining the country. Well, how is he ruining the country? Well, I don't know. They did not know. They had no understanding of the topics. They were just anti him. Um, the only thing that they did say is that they didn't. They didn't think that he, it's because he's not even a citizen of the country, which is ridiculous. You know, I'm sure he has to be a citizen of the country. He's a president. How do you fi fill out the forms for that? You know, you think anyone can just you know? Hello, my name is Hans Jemahafa, and I wish. To run for president of your country. Which country is this? Oh, well, Mr. Zimmerhofer, this is America. And of course you can run for president here. Here, just fill out this one piece of paper. Sign here, here, initial here, date here, and initial there, and you're ready to go. Oh, yes. Hmm. Under citizenship, I will put... What country was this again? This is the good old USA. I will put... United States of America as my country. Yes. Would you need to see some identification? We don't need to see your identification. <laughs> These are not the droids we're looking for. <laughs> Just a little joke. No, that's fine. Just your signature is good enough. Would you like to see maybe my social security card so you could get my social security number? No, we don't need your social security number. <laughs> we'll only need that in case you actually make it as president. That way we can tax you for your job. <gasps> okay, okay. As I mean, you have to prove that you can work in this country just to get a minimum wage job. Now, I understand that places like Walmart in the past and other places would hire illegals and they'd sit there, oh, I'm going to keep a fire there. But, I mean, every job I've I've been to, I've had to show something, a birth certificate or a social security card. I went to um, Frightmares, which is a local, um, every October... 
Lagoon out here. It's an amusement park out here called Lagoon. They put on what's called Frightmares. They changed their name to Frightmares, and it's a scary version. Every October they do this, and I worked for them one year, and I had lost my social security card while I was there, and they told me they really needed to have that in order for me to work there. They wouldn't be able to get me my checks otherwise. Okay, and I'm not running for president. I was just being the crazy janitor in their maze, okay? Every job I've been to, I've had to show some sort of identification. Now, maybe I'm just unlucky in that, but I'm sure, I'm sure if you're running for president, you got to give them a little bit more than just, oh, here's my social security card. I took it from the name of a dead boy who died in childbirth, you know. Well, that was one of the things my wife brought up. Well, he came out and he showed his uh, birth certificate. And then she says, well, those things can be forged. And I'm like, yeah, but what kind of crackerjack organization is our government anyway if she's thinking that it's that easy to just run for president, that you can't, you can't, you don't even have to show proof of citizenship. I mean, it's in, it's the law. In order to be president you have to be a natural citizen of the United States now remember I remember back when Arnold became governor of California that there was a lot of talk amongst certain Republicans that they should try to get that law repealed and changed reform that law so that all you had to do was be a citizen of the country to run for president that way Arnold could run because he was born to lead, not to read. Now, I remember that. I seem to remember that. But, you know, of course, when Barack became president, it became very important for us to know whether or not he was a natural citizen, which he was born in Hawaii. We know this. Um, and, you know, I, I really think it's really just a bunch of xenophobia and, jerkishness and bigotry that that's going on when they sit there and question whether or not he was uh uh born in the u.s in you know the U the united states you know it's not like you know if he was a white senator named john mccain and um uh, no one would ever question whether or not he was born in the continental United States or if it was from actually, uh, if he was born in Panama, in the Panama Canal Zone, which was a U.S. territory. True. I'm not questioning whether or not the guy's a citizen. He was born in a U.S. territory. But he wasn't born in this country. He was born in Panama. So there you go. No one questioned that. And would they? Had he made it president, would the Democrats come up? I don't think he's from around here. He don't look. He look like he might be from Panama. Don't think he's from around here. Well, these are, these are the kind of questions. And, and the reason why these people don't like Obama really is just because they think that they are who the Republican Party cares about. They don't want to pay more taxes, even though I'm pretty sure none of them make over the uh, $33,000 a year it takes to become part of the top 50%. I'm pretty sure they're in the bottom 50%. So they're not paying much in taxes. They're single. These people were single. So they were paying more in taxes than, let's say, a family of four is. But that is in the bottom 50%, I should add on that. But they're not in that top 50%. They're not paying the majority of the taxes in the country. So I don't understand why they're like saying, don't tax us, when they should be saying that to Orrin Hatch. I don't want to be taxed, Orrin Hatch, you BS senator from Utah, which they're from, these people. They're in the bottom 50%, and they're saying, I don't want to get taxed. And I don't want health care. I pay $47 for my health care. And I'm saying, well, you're a single person. $47 a paycheck isn't a lot. When you're paying $260 a paycheck, and you're only making $33,000 a year, health insurance gets expensive when you want to make sure that your kid can get their teeth worked on. And that's one of the things I'd also like to bring up is a little thought project for for people there. I'm talking a lot to people 
all over the, the span, economic span here. But I just want to know your opinion. And I'll probably get a lot of hateful comments for this from anyone that watches this. But it was a thought that I had. Is let's say you're walking down the street, however much money you make, provided you're not in that top 0.1% that is like so exceedingly rich you could buy an island. You know, I'm not, I'm talking like, you know, you're not David Copperfield, okay, buying your own island or buying a timeshare on an island even. I'm not talking about people that can buy that much. I'm talking about like, you know, you're just average citizen, which being average would probably be in the bottom 50% or slightly into the top 50%. That would be your average in there, wouldn't it? Making about thirty-three to $34,000 a year in 2009. Um, you're that person, you're walking around, you're the average Joe. Some guy walks up to you, a wizard, the devil, Jesus... Buddha, Allah, someone walks up to you and says, I've got a deal for you. I see you walking around. You're completely average. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to upgrade you to $400,000 a year. Top 1%. In exchange for that, you'll have to pay 30% of that in taxes. But you'll be making for over $400,000 a year. Now, this does not include anything that you have currently. Everything that you've had is now gone. You are now living with this new income. Would you rather do that or would you stay where you're at? Now let's look at it from reverse. Let's say you're making $400,000 a year and you're paying, what is it? I, I, I'm i not even sure, but I think I've been hearing numbers like 24 to 30% in taxes. Now, let's assume you're paying that much in taxes, but you're making 400000 or more than that. And um, incomes the devil, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, whomever, a genie. And he says to you, I've got a way for you to not pay taxes anymore. In fact, I'm going to guarantee you that with your family of four or whatnot, you're going to get maybe five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 every tax time in check form due to the fact that you only make your new balance of $33,000 a year or less or less. You're going to make less than $33,000 a year. But every April 15th, you are guaranteed to get six to $7,000 back from the good old US of A. Because you've got expenses you've got to pay for, you've got kids you've got to pay for, you've got mouths to feed, and plus you also probably have a cumulative debt because your living wage is barely livable. Which would you rather take? I'm just asking. I just want to know who would rather have get paid back their taxes but have to live within the means of $33,000 or who would rather make $400,000 and up and still have to pay, you know, 30% in taxes, 30% of their income in taxes. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Because even if you're making 400000 paying 50% in taxes, but you're still pulling in more, more than the average homie, you know? If you gave me 100000 if you gave your average bottom 50-er $100,000 to live, they could live in the same means that they have now for, what, three years? Three years on that kind of income. That means they change nothing in their lifestyle. They're still drinking ghetto soda and eating ramen noodles. But they're doing that for the next three years without having to break into any of their actual income. If it was tax-free and a gift, there you go. Anyone would like $100,000. That's why we sit there and we, you know, punch each other out and fist each other every Christmas time. It's time to get those toys on a good deal. Uh, uh. Why do you think people beat each other up to go to Walmart on that just to save 20% on a toy? You know, because we don't have the money to spend. That could be money that we could spend on something else. We can have a better Christmas based on that. Because when you're poor, you do with what you got. And I've taken too long on this video.